Welcome to Beyond the Lab, a series by the Office of Career Development within the Biomedical Research, Education, and Training Department at Vanderbilt University. My name is Kate Stewart. I'm here today with Sarah Fitzgerald. So glad to see you. Thank you for okay. coming. Thank you. Um, so tell me about your time at Vanderbilt. Tell me your year, your, your department, all that, and, and um, sure. tell me what you did here. Okay, so I was the second entering class of the IGP program. I entered in 1993, graduated with my PhD in 1998. At the time, it was the Department of Molecular Biology, which has now become the Biological Sciences Department. Right. So I was in the lab of Doug Kavanagh, and I studied um, translational control during development um, in a fruit fly lab. So okay. a lot of molecular biology. So, so. Um, what did you do after Vanderbilt? So right after graduation, I moved to Atlanta, and I did a brief stint in a lab at Emory University working on HIV vaccine development. And it was a brand new lab, and if you remember back to the 90s, HIV was the in thing to study, so we were a really well-funded lab. But I was the very first employee of that brand new lab. So what that meant was I needed to uh, spend time buying all of the equipment and supplies for the new lab. So um, I was the lab manager and spent a lot of time just getting things set up and working there. So that was kind of the start of the career we'll talk about today. Okay, so tell me so, what you do now. So um, after about a year and a half in that lab, I realized that I needed to make a change for myself. I was a really good scientist. I really enjoyed talking about science, but doing the bench work, I realized, was probably not the best fit for who my core personality is. So um, having that experience of setting up a lab and seeing a number of sales reps come in, because of course sales reps, when they know your lab is funded, they tend to show up. So for me, um, I had seen a lot of really good salespeople that helped me greatly in making the decisions that we needed to make for our lab. And I also saw a lot of people that came through that were less helpful. So as I was analyzing that and thinking about my next steps, I thought, you know, I think I know what it might take to be a good salesperson. I think I'm going to move to look for sales. So um, I interviewed at a number of places and ended up taking a position um, as a consumable salesperson with a company called Amersham Pharmacia Biotech. And that company was ultimately bought by GE Healthcare, okay. which is the company that I work for still today. Okay, so what do you do now exactly? So. Now I have moved into a leadership role and I am, my title is modality leader, which essentially means that I direct sales. I have a sales team for the DharmaCon business at GE Healthcare. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about the details there, but I manage a team of salespeople. But I also, kind of beyond what you might expect as a, like a director of sales title, I also really work hard on strategy. So we're looking into the long term, like what do we do with our business decisions? How do we develop products that the market needs? How might we set ourselves up for success to serve our customers? So it's, it's a lot more than just doing quotes and managing a group of salespeople, which is also part of my job. Okay, so what does your daily activities look like or a, a glimpse of your week even or, or your okay. day? Yeah, so I manage all of US and Canada. So what that means is I do spend a lot of time on the road. So I travel about three out of four weeks a month. Okay. Um, but when I'm not traveling, I'm working from my home office at my house. And I spend a lot of time um, certainly working with my team members who are the direct frontline salespeople. So helping them to identify customers that we should be talking to, helping them to understand how we best position our products to our customers, and, and working on pricing and quotes. Those are all the standard type things that you would think about that someone might do with a commercial career. So I do spend some, a good amount of time with that. I also spend a lot of time traveling out and visiting customers in the labs. And my role in those type meetings, you know, I may be meeting with an academic laboratory, I might be meeting with a biotech company, I might be meeting with a pharma company. And I'm talking with people at all levels within that organization. But my role in those meetings is much less, here's something that we want to sell you, please buy it, is more to look at the, the bigger picture of what those people are needing to do. I ask our science, the scientist customers a lot of questions about the end goals of what they are trying to accomplish. And then we thoughtfully come back and say, you know, here, here are some solutions that you might want to consider. So we really spend a lot of time with consultation. So that's sort of the external look, you know, type things that we do. I would also say, you know, internally, I'm meeting with um, a lot of different departments at GE Healthcare to think about, as I mentioned earlier, strategy. So for instance, I spend a lot of time working with marketing. How are we presenting ourselves to the market? I work a lot with finance. We talk about how we're forecasting so that when we are looking to sell things, I'm proje projecting what we might do in the future so that we're lining up with our manufacturing organization so that they understand what the market's going to be needing so that we're ready to meet the needs of our customers when our customers expect to be able to buy products. Mm -hmm. That's a really important function of the role. 
and working with our leadership, trying to understand how do we best resource our company for R&D or future um, hires that we may need to make. So it's a lot, um, a lot of networking within the company and really trying to make sure that um, we're looking forward in terms of what our customers may need us to be doing in the future. Okay, so there seems to be a lot of skills that you have that <laughs> yes. make you a great fit for this job. What do you think are some of the standout skills that make you a good fit for what you're doing. Okay, so I think um, first and foremost is having a scientific training and a background. And I think uh, Vanderbilt really prepared me well for that. Um, being able to talk to customers at all levels, whether I'm speaking with a bench scientist or the CSO mm -hmm. of an organization or a CFO, someone who's looking at you know, the business strategy for their companies, it's always important to be able to understand in a few moments what that customer may be doing so that I can ask intelligent questions to understand the nature of the problems we're trying to solve for them. Right. So I think that scientific background and those skills are indispensable. And I was very well prepared for that at, at Vanderbilt. I think um, some of the other type things that are really important because I'm working in a team environment, as I described, I'm talking to people all day long, whether it's customers or internally, it's those people skills emotional intelligence, understanding how best to communicate and deliver messages. All of those things are really important for a, uh, a career in commercial, I would say. And then of course, I would also add a bit of financial awareness, which okay. I've had to learn on the job. Right, right. So I came in as a sales rep, the only thing I ever sold before I entered a commercial career was Girl Scout cookies. Okay, so I didn't know how to do that. And so I've had to learn that on the fly. And the good news is it's possible to learn it. If you're an educated person, you can figure that part out. So I've learned that on the fly, but it really has been um, an important portion of my career because we're constantly looking at how do we price things properly? How do we help our customers afford what we do? Um, how do we help them maybe finance? So there's a whole um, layer there that is a, an acquired skill that I've had over the past 20 years of uh, being in yeah. commercial. And from Girl Scout cookies too. Yeah, of yeah. course. <laughs> um, so if a graduate student, a current graduate student or a current postdoc is interested in doing something like you, what would you tell them? What kind of advice would you give them to do now or um, to what to pursue? Okay. So I think the first thing, you know, for me, um, when I was in the lab, I kind of mentioned I was a good scientist, but I was a, a little bit unhappy in the lab. And I think the, for me, the journey was trying to understand and get that self-awareness about, okay, what am I good at? That's one part of it, but what am I passionate about? And how do I know myself? So I think for anyone looking to go into a career like this, that is something that they probably do need to do a little bit of soul search searching and understanding what makes me happy. For me, that answer was, I like to travel, I like to be out and about, I like to network, I like to work in a team. And some of those things you can find in the lab and many of those things are also things that you can find in, in, a, in a career like what I'm doing. So I think you know, really understanding what is your desire, what you like to do. From a practical perspective, I would say some of the things that I would recommend is if you're looking to do a, a career commercial, mm -hmm. spend some time with maybe the sales reps that are coming into the lab. Talk to them. I used to invite them out to lunch with me when they would come in. I'd say, can we grab a cup of coffee, go out to lunch, let's talk about what you're doing. And I asked them many, many questions before I moved into that field. Um, if, you can't, if sales reps aren't coming into the lab where you're working, maybe seek them out. Vendor shows, maybe go to, um, if you're at conferences, there's always vendor shows at the conferences. Spend some time on the floor both observing their behaviors, but also talking and asking questions. Okay, that's very helpful. Um, so it seems like you do a lot of networking and yes. you meet a lot of people. Yes. What are some of the ways that you personally network? Okay, networking is not something that happens by accident. Networking is something I really believe you need to plan. Because if you don't, you get busy and you forget to do it. And it's so easy to stay in your own silo, in your own world, and talk to the people that you only need to talk to. So I've learned this lesson over many years, and sometimes the hard way, that if you take a proactive approach to networking and you plan who you might need to meet and the type of people you need to meet, mm -hmm. it is actually something that you can do relatively easily if you plan it. So some of the things that I, plan, I do when it's internal networking at GE, because of course GE is a really large company, so a lot of times I'm thinking, okay, who might I need to interact with down the road and how can I foster those relationships in advance of the time that I need them? And then I try to find out maybe someone who knows that person that could introduce me or I find some reason where I just reach out to them and say, I'd like to get to know you better. Could we have a chance to interact? Right. That's internal. Um, external, I think one of the things that's worked really well for me is LinkedIn and using LinkedIn Navigator and you know, trying to understand the relationships between the people that are out there and using um, just, I, I do a lot of searches and try to figure out who I might need to inter interact with. 
Yeah. I'm going to a certain geography. Who's in San Francisco doing X, Y, Z kind of work or wherever I'm going? And yeah. I try to network that way. Okay. Tell me if you think, um, as a grad student or a postdoc is looking to pursue a, a role like this, would they need a postdoc to, to do this yeah. work? I think the answer is maybe. It could help. Um, the role that I did after graduation was not a formal postdoc. I did take a lab manager, a senior lab manager role. I do think that it really helped me to be in just an additional lab setting and having that experience. I think having a, a variety of scientific experiences in the lab has really helped me as well. Mm -hmm. So I think if someone is looking for a breadth of scientific experience and would like to do a postdoc, it definitely could help. Okay. Um, is it necessary? No. I work with many people who have bachelors in science. I work with people who have masters and they're also very successful. So I think the message is that there are many routes to a commercial career. Mm -hmm. I think something that a postdoc could bring to the table if someone were to do a postdoc and then come into commercial is really um, they could potentially take a more technical role in a commercial company and use that as a springboard. They don't have to be the first, the first line customer facing person. Right. I think what I never realized before I got here is that there are many roles that are sort of an interim between science and commercial. So for instance, R&D would be a great example. Joining an R&D group at a company that you know, sells products in, to the marketplace. You are a part of that commercial team in many ways because you're thinking about what do your customers need? How do I produce a product that is actually gonna be something that people want to buy? Mm -hmm. Right, so they need to be interacting with customers. Um, application scientists would be a second role that I would recommend people with a PhD or a postdoc consider mm -hmm. because those are technical roles, but at the same time, they are part of a commercial team. They're part of bringing solutions to the customers. So right. I think it really depends on the person's interests, but I think that in many cases, a postdoc could be beneficial. Okay. So if you could give some words of wisdom to current graduate students from postdocs, sort of as your last question, what would you, what would you want, to right. tell, want them to know? Right. So I think um, one of the things that I probably have learned over my 20 years is that, you know, your career, sometimes it kind of comes, sometimes it's very proactive and you're seeking it out. And sometimes you just have to seize opportunities as they come. And I think um, you do need to make thoughtful choices, but sometimes taking risks in the positions that you're looking at, maybe trying something for a while is a really good thing. And I think, you know, I did that. Leaving the lab and going to commercial was definitely a risk. Moving from being a salesperson to a manager, for me, felt very risky. Am I really going to like this? I don't know. But you can always change courses. And I think, you know, taking that fear out of the equation of trying something new mm -hmm. is something that I wish if I could go back 20 years, I would tell myself. I think the other piece is self-awareness. And truly, as I mentioned earlier, take that time to know what it is that you truly like, not just what you're good at and understand you know, what it is that's gonna you know, be fulfilling for you. Yeah. And you know, there's many ways to do that, but one thing that I, I think would be something I would tell myself if I could go back 20 years and talk to myself in graduate school would be ask people who surround you, who you work with for insights. Ask them, what do you think I do well? What do you think I'm not doing well where I can improve? And for me, I think I was a little bit prohibited in doing that. And over the years in my career, I've learned that sometimes it's not easy to hear some of those insights or to ask for insights. But when you ask, you have an opportunity to learn and you see, wow, someone thinks I'm really great at this. I didn't realize I was good at that. And that self-awareness piece can be really helped along, not only through doing soul searching, but also from asking people around you. And I wish I had done more of that. So that would be my words of wisdom. Awesome. Thank you yeah. so much for your time today. You're welcome. Thanks for coming My back. pleasure.